the last session presented by Golden Road Brewing. And we are in Omaha, Nebraska. You obviously just watched what happened at the pool, and it was so exciting. And, of course, we're going to get to that. But one thing that is super special right now is this is the 2020 Olympic trials, and we are 20 years removed from the Sydney 2000 Games. And we have someone very special who is our 20, or pardon me, our 2000 Olympian of the day. And let's take a look at her. Seventeen-year-old Sandino in lane three, right next to her American teammate Bennett. Plachkova's going to win the silver, and Sandino, the gutty seventeen-year-old, is going to hold off Rigamonte for the bronze. Brooke Bennett with a new Olympic record time defends her gold medal successfully. <laughs> and then Sandino. You know, she's been so busy all week, just out of the money in a couple races, and then she finally gets the hardware. <laughs> Look at her. Thank look at you. That. Thank you. Finally. I've all this a, work is paying off. I've got an individual Olympic medal. Oh, my gosh. Caitlin Sandino. It's so good to see you. <laughs> Amy, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> you're thrilled about that, aren't you? I was like, wait, 21 years ago? I think you're telling bad math it doesn't there's seem, no way it there's doesn't no, way. no it doesn't seem like that long ago does it no, it really doesn't and they were talking about your age 17 and we're seeing some of the youngsters here yes. what advice would you give them i you know just don't be intimidated by the name of this meet being the olympic trials it's just another swim meet go out there you know what you're doing enjoy the moment. For me, I remember when I made my first team, I was in the car with my coach Vic Riggs and we were like bumping like the Jing, uh, the Venga boys. The Venga bus is coming. And, and we were just bum, bum. And I, you would never know that I was like trying to qualify for my first Olympic team. Just be in the moment, enjoy, have fun, and, and don't get intimidated by the name, the Olympic trials. So when you got to the Olympics, you're 17, <laughs> right? And you've got some of the older people on the team and they kind of put us all in, <clears throat> this girl right here, and they, they put us all in one house. How was that for you being a youngster and having all of his old people be like, you guys need to be quiet, go to bed. <laughs> I do remember that. They're like, you need to turn your energy down just a little bit, <laughs> your volume down a little bit. You know, that was, it was surreal. Like I felt like I was in a sorority house with just much wiser, more <laughs> veterans. And I just looked up to everybody, you know, and it was what an experience to be in a house with the world's best, you know, and obviously Team USA. Yeah. But just the bond that we developed there and the pride that comes with we're representing the United States of America. And I just remember being in awe of the whole situation and, and truly admiring the leadership that we had on that 2000 team. We had a lot of really good leaders, we did. some really good leaders. It was awesome. But what was the best part? for you of those Olympics. It doesn't have Ooh, to be pool related. It no. can be any part. Actually, it was it was a lesson that I learned that really shaped the rest of my swimming career. So the first race was the 400 IM. I had won at Olympic trials. I was going into it as a favorite. And in Sydney, Australia, swimming's a really big deal, a really big deal. Like yeah. we don't experience that here in the States. And, you know, I remember being kind of taken back by all the paparazzi. Do you remember that? They yep. showed up like af at the airport and they really wanted to like pin us against Australia, like yeah. this huge rival. And, and then I found out people were betting on the sport. I'm yeah. like, what? They're taking bets? And people were saying that I was going to win mm -hmm. a medal. And that really crept in my head. I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to win a medal. People are betting on me. People are predicting me. And then people are like, oh, you're swimming the first the first women's race to win a medal. It's going to be you. I was like, oh, okay, I got to win this medal. So I swam the 400 mm. IM. I got fourth. Right. That's not a medal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember being, like, devastated, crushed. Yeah. Got out of the pool, tears. I mean, swimming never made me cry. I was always just bouncing off the walls. And... I was embarrassed, ashamed. I felt like I let my country down. Like I wrote this in my journal. And um, Amanda Beard came up to me, a moment I'll never forget. And she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I just got fourth. She's like, well, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, Amanda, I just got fourth. Mm -hmm. She told me again. I'm like, girl, fourth. I got fourth. It's not a medal. And she was just so cool, calm, collected Amanda, just, you know, my little SoCal swimming buddy. Caitlin, you're 17 years old and only three people in this world can beat you. Right. And it was like a light bulb moment. And my whole outlook on swimming just changed right then and there. I was like, 
every time I swim, I want to go best time. Mm -hmm. And if I go best time, I'm going to celebrate no matter what. If it's first, second, third, eighth, ninth, tenth, no medal, medal. Because that's all you can worry about, right? Swimming is based on numbers. You can't argue with numbers. Right. And you don't have to worry about anybody else. Get your hand on the wall, see your time. And if it gets you a medal, yep. awesome. If it's the best time, celebrate. Because I think we're in this culture where it's like gold medal, gold medal, gold medal. And don't get me wrong. I'm so competitive. I want a stinking gold medal. Of course. But if it's the best time, you've never been that fast before, yeah. get out with your head up. And so from there on out, I just think that lesson in Sydney really shaped the rest of my swimming career. That is so interesting because I had a same experience, different outcome, mm -hmm. where I got fourth in my very first race, <gasps> felt the same way. I let my whole country down, yeah. right? Because yeah. we do, we have that. And it's interesting that you got out of it. I had to swim in a relay <laughs> in order to get myself out of it. So I'm really glad that you had Amanda. So when you talk about leadership, even yes. though she's not that <laughs> much <laughs> older. Like, are you and a half older than yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> she went to the Olympics when she was 14. Right. So she had all this experience. <laughs> right. Right. She was so seasoned. Yes. <laughs> Well, let's go a little bit after Sydney. Oh, yes. so, so you parlay, um, you continue swimming, but you parlay your swimming career into a great career Thank afterwards. You. Is this something that you wanted to do the entire time you were swimming? You know, I, I my goal in swimming, for example, in high school is like I want to swim so fast mm -hmm. that I can go to any college I want and have them pay for it. You know, so that was the goal. And then when I got to University of Southern California on a full ride scholarship, I felt like this is a deal, right? Mm. You do your part we'll pay for this. I mean, what, what a blessing, yeah. you know? So I felt like that was my job, you know, to show up, swim well, but unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, I have both outlooks. You know, I had a lot of injuries during that time, a lot of illnesses, um, a, a car accident, you know, putting on that freshman 15, I saw it was like freshman 20. Um, you know, there was a lot of over, things to overcome. So it was a hard four years, but what I had said tonight in the stands was like going to Sydney and getting that taste it's like, oh yeah, I wanna do that again. Get me there to do it again. And so that was the motivation to make it to 04 was just to experience what we had gotten to experience and just be older, wiser, more experienced. I mean, I had only, I made the 99 Pan American Games when I was 16. That was my first international race and my next one was off to Australia the following summer. You know, so it happened so quickly. Yeah. So I would say, you know, the goal was just to go again and yeah. to not give up until I got there. What did you learn your second time you didn't know about in your first time? <laughs> I love the sport. Mm. It just I, I just love to race. I love to race. I was in the most surreal 400 IM battle that I'll never forget. It's like when I look back on my swimming career, the moment that I'm the most proud of. And I got my hand on the wall, and it was silver by 12 and hundreds of a second. But it's the race that I will just, that is, if you had to be like, okay, what's Caitlin Sandino good at? Oh, that 400 IM at, at Athens. And closely matched with the four by 200 freestyle relay, but you know, um, you know, that's different as an individual race. Yeah. I just knew how it, I just, it was so bittersweet to be there because of how hard it was to get there. So just yeah. enjoying the moment. Cause I did go through a time in those four years. Where I didn't like swimming, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I hated it. And I it was almost like, okay, I can't do this anymore, you know? And then when I got to Athens and I was with my teammates and I was feeling strong and the injuries were behind me, I was like, no, I love this sport. And I love to race and I love to represent this country. So it was like a, a just a refreshing moment in my career. And I, I'll never forget, Eddie Reese came up to me. He's like, Kaylin, you're a different swimmer right now. I'm like, really? He's like, you're so happy. And I was like, absolutely. That is so important, too. I think a lot of people forget that, that you need to be happy. And this is fun. Yeah. This, I, Granted, it is a job for it some is. people, yeah. but it's a fun job. I absolutely. See the world, be in shape. Yep. You know, have these teammates, these memories. I mean, we could go on and on just with the amazing people that have come into our life because of our sport, right. let alone the, the passports that we've gotten stamped and the cool clothes of Team USA. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a dream to be a part of USA Swimming. And, and I, I truly am very grateful and honored to still be a part of this culture. That's awesome. I love it when like I'll pull out this stuff and wear it to CrossFit and they'll be like, is that real? I'm like, it's real. <laughs> yeah. You know, some people tonight, Got some real new swag. We've got oh some new Olympians. You're out for for people who uh, are watching. Yes. You're out on deck. Yes, you are giving us the ins and the outs, right? And so let's take a look here at the men's oh. 400 IM. If you could just run us through it a little bit, Amy. This race was surreal. I mean, obviously Chase was a favorite. I feel like coming in, but honestly, I feel like Chase has kind of been under the radar a little bit recently. Yeah. So when he got his hand on the wall, it was he, he dominated that race. 
Oh, Kieran, Kieran Smith, my goodness. Yeah, that was a great race, wasn't it? Incredible. I honestly, I, I, I didn't know what to expect in the 400 free for the men. You know, we're not super, super strong in this right now, but he, he, he stepped up, but Amy, the race of the night for me. Uh, girl. Emma, girl, where did you come from on that last 100? The last 25 meters. That was surreal. Like, I had all the fills, total goosebumps. You know, she's 19 years old. Yes. It was so cool because I got to pass out the award or hand out the award for that. And her club coach was with me. I'm like, how long, you know, how old was she when you started coaching her? She's like 13. I'm like, that just, it, that was me, you know? Yeah. I, I started so young with my club coach and stayed with him throughout and made a team as a teenager and, she, I was just that night. I, I'm not, literally not gonna be able to sleep tonight. That was so exciting. It wasn't it great. You always hear people go, "She was shot out of a slingshot." Like it literally <laughs> was. That's what happened. Yes. She's gonna go back and watch that and be like, you know, because people, you always go, "What were people talking about?" And then you see it and you're like, oh, "Whoa!" Absolutely, it was crazy. And I am just so impressed by the fans here in Omaha because obviously we're at a, you know, a, the capacity is smaller than the past. But these fans were on their feet. They were loud. They were rowdy. Like that, I'm just so grateful for this amazing support that we have in Omaha. Yeah. You know, it's just because the, the athletes feed off of that. I mean, I was, it re energized me, you know, and that's what we need for the, you know, we have seven more nights of this. And yeah. the swimmers definitely put on a show tonight. It was incredible to be on the deck to, to witness it. I'll tell you what, you don't need any coffee after any of this, <laughs> no. right? I mean, I, it's going to be. I don't know how to calm down after that. I don't either. I don't know how the swimmers do it. I don't know how we're going to do it. I but know. good, great. Caitlin, it was so amazing Thank chatting you with you. Me. And congrats on everything. You were just a rock star and it's fun to watch. Right back at you, sister. Oh, thank I you, love sweetie. It. Teammates forever. Teammates for life. Love Yay. it. Yay. All right, you guys, we'll definitely stick. Stick around. We're going to be right back and we're going to have Miss 400 I Am, Emma and Wyatt, when we come back. Oh, incredible. Don't leave. Hi. Enter a California state of mind where refreshing beer meets real mangoes. Mango Cart, an award-winning wheat ale from Golden Road Brewing. Once we start swimming, we're in for life. <laughs> we swim with goals. Let's get it going, come on. With joy, with our community. A community that believes swimmers don't just do something fun. They become something exceptional. <laughs> Come join us here, where we love this sport. And welcome back to the last session, brought to you by Golden Road Brewing. I'm six-time Olympic gold medalist Amy Van Dyken, and we have got the newest member of the United States Olympic team here. You are shaking. I can <laughs> see it. Emma Wyatt, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. This is amazing. Your race is going to be talked about for so long. Did you realize what you did that last, I'm going to give you 40 meters, it was probably really 25? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. The last 50 hurt a lot. Um, I kind of just put my head down and kicked as hard as I could, but I really couldn't see anything, to be honest. <laughs> So you have no idea. Have you watched the race yet with a coach? No, <gasps> not yet. Oh, my gosh. You are going to be surprised. You were really – what you did tonight was – impeccable you were with everybody and then all of a sudden it was like you were shot out of a cannon <laughs> thank you <laughs> what do you think about during that race um I mean for the 400 I am for me it's been a lot of like race preparation um and tonight really I was just trying to race um obviously a lot of amazing people in the field so really I was just trying to compete so we were talking to Elizabeth Beisel earlier, and she said that the 400 IM in the morning is kind of like a chess game, right? So you just want to get a spot yeah. at night. Is that what you did this morning as well? Um, this morning, I was really nervous. I was trying to get that out of the system. Um, and of course, um, there's always strategy to the 400 IM. Do you, do you have a particular strategy that you try to stick to? Um, I mean, I've traditionally always been a back half swimmer, so um, not take it out too hard. Yeah, well, we saw that today. <laughs> We totally saw that today. That is amazing. Thank so what you. is your favorite part of the IM? Um, I think now it's backstroke. Um, that never that was always my weak stroke. Um, I spent a lot of time on it. Um, and I think that's really when I can start getting to work in the race. 
Okay. And what else are we going to see you in this week? We've got a few more days. Yeah. Um, I have the 400 free tomorrow. Um, and then 200 free, 800, possibly the mile, um, and possibly a two back. <laughs> You're speaking to a sprinter who knows not the <laughs> language that you are speaking right now. That's incredible. Thank you. So now you've got this out of the way. Now it's just icing on the cake, right? Yeah. Um, I was nervous having it the first day, but now I'm glad it's over um, to, to just have fun the rest of me and race. So. Well, obviously, here's the thing. We have goals, right? Like, we want to have fun. That's obviously a goal, right? But what are your other goals in some of your other events? Um, I mean, I feel pretty good about my freestyle right now. Um, so try um, to get as high as I can in those events. Um, I'm excited for the 400 free tomorrow. I'm excited for the 400 free <laughs> as well. Do you Now, what do you do now when you leave here? What happens to Emma and Emma's world? <laughs> um, well, I'll definitely see my sister and my mom. Um, they're freaking out. Um, <laughs> and then after that, kind of just like try my best to get to sleep tonight because um, we have morning tomorrow. So, right. Yes. So what I, oh, I had, I'm going to tell you because I love to give advice. I swam five events in my first Olympics and my coach said that my energy was like a tank of gasoline that I couldn't refuel. Did your coach ever tell you this? No. Okay. You probably drive a hybrid, so you have no idea what I'm talking about. And he said you can waste all of like half of your gas on that first race and then you've only got half for the other races. So my suggestion to you, kick your feet up, watch a little Netflix, flicks, maybe some of the YouTubes, maybe a Tiki Talk, and you know, just chill out. You're an Olympian girl. Thank you. That's crazy. Are you are you gonna make a TikTok out of this whole thing? Um, I mean, my sister probably will. Okay. Yeah, definitely. You're going to go viral, girl. You know what else is going to go viral? We're going to take a look at this race, and I want you to kind of talk us through it, what you were feeling in this moment, because this was a really good race. Thank Let's you. Let's go ahead and take a look at the monitor. Do you remember any of this? No. I No. <laughs> Look at that, you're getting attacked and you don't remember? Who are these people? Um, these are my teammates, um, uh, my future teammates, my current teammates. Um, I'm just so lucky to have them, so. Oh, now your future teammates, where, where is our future leading us? Um, University of Virginia um, in the fall. Good, yeah. good. Do you know your roommate? Um, well, my roommates, I have three of them. Okay. Yeah. Um, Alex Walsh, Abby Harder, and Annie Keeney. Love it. I yes. love it when you know them. Now, so you are an Olympian going into your freshman year. Talk about what you think NCAAs is going to be like. <laughs> I mean, do you expect to be an NCAA champion your first year? Um, Say yes. <laughs> Say yes. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, good. <laughs> um, and hopefully be a part of a team one as well. So, yes. That's awesome. So when you first looked up and you saw that you had won and what the ramifications of that were, what was the first thought that went through your head? Um, I, I didn't even look at my time. I, I was just shocked. Um, I'm just so excited. Okay. What do you listen to before your race? Taylor Swift. Spotify, <laughs> Apple Music. Apple Music. Okay. <laughs> Good. We've got her on shuffle. Do we have one song that you like to listen to? Um, honestly, I could put it on shuffle and be happy. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what now what happens if like a Dirk Bentley pops up? <laughs> I mean, honestly, there's not a bad song. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, listen, I am so thankful to have you on here. Congratulations on being a part of the fraternity of being an Olympian. We all know each other and we all love each other. And I am so proud of you and I cannot wait to see what Tokyo holds for you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Oh, well. thank you so much. <laughs> you are just amazing. Again, that was uh, Ms. Emma Wyatt, who is our new 2020 Tokyo Olympian. Thank you. So I mean the 400 I am and possibly more, right? We'll see. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Emma, you gotta go, yes, I am gonna win it all. I'm gonna take it all home. Uh, okay, girl, we're going to work on this. But, but until then, uh, we've got we to gotta go and run and take a quick little break really quick. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And thank you. Don't go anywhere because we're going to be right back. Hey, everyone. This is Ryan Lochte. Hey, guys. It's Lily. What's up, guys? My name is Michael Andrew, and I'm going to speak to you a little bit about why swimming. Um, I get asked this question a lot. Why did you pick swimming? It's a very loaded question. Why I chose swimming. Why I love swimming. Why do I love swimming? Why did I choose swimming? Why is swimming so important in my life? For me, swimming kind of picked me. I was learning how to swim about the same time I was learning how to walk. I'm not sure if I really chose swimming.
swimming or swimming chose me. Ever since a young age, swimming's just always been my sport. I love, love, love the sport. I cannot express that enough. I first started swimming because of my love for the water in general. In the summers, my parents would take my two older brothers and I to the pools and we would just enjoy splashing and jumping in the water. I feel at home in the water, feel very like connected. I have always loved the water. I think it boils down to that. I've always respected the water. I've always appreciated the water. There's just something about me being in the water that calms everything down. It's really just as simple as the fact that I love going fast in water. I love racing because I love that adrenaline feeling I get when I'm behind the blocks. I love to compete. I love to win. I love the struggle of training. It feeds my competitive nature. You know, I just I just love to race, whether it's the 50 free, the 10K, or, you know, the 400 IM. And I've just enjoyed it so much. You know, the people it's, it's introduced me to, the places it's brought me to. Swimming has afforded me the opportunities to be able to meet amazing people, travel, be inspired by others, but also serve as an inspiration to others. Some of the friends that I've made in swimming will be my lifelong friends. Everywhere I go, we have these incredible relationships and memories and experiences from racing and traveling. The swimming has taught me how to interact with so many different people from so many different backgrounds. It uh, has led me all over the world. I've made friends all over the planet and uh, it's added culture to my life, it's added friends to my life, it's given me incredible core values. I just still love going to the pool, I still love going to practice, I still love challenging myself and pushing myself. I love to work hard, I love to see the progress that I can make as an individual, and I love to race, so that's my why. That is my why for swimming. Uh, basically just the passion to compete and the willingness to, to meet new people. I think that when we love something, it's something that we always want to do. It's something that we want to strive to be our best in, and swimming is that for me. It simply is just something that I love to do. And that's why swimming has always been and is still the sport for me. And hearing from some of the top Olympians uh, in the country and in the world talking about why they love swimming so much. And there it was. It gives you just chills. We're also going to have some more Olympians named tomorrow as we go ahead and we take a look at what we're going to have in store for you tomorrow uh, on the old docket there as in terms of swimming. So we have got the Women's 100 Butterfly Final. We're going to name an Olympian there. The Men's 200 Freestyle Semi the women's 100 breaststroke semifinal, the men's 100 breaststroke, that is gonna be a final. Are we gonna see Michael Andrew break his American record for a third time here in Omaha? We'll have to wait and see. We've got the women's 400 freestyle, that's a final, another Olympian named there. The men's 100 backstroke, that's gonna be a semifinal, as well as the women's 100 backstroke, that is another semifinal. So tomorrow night is gonna be just as exciting as the first night. It's only going to get better from here. And don't forget, you guys, before you watch the NBC coverage of the Olympic Trials 2020 here in Omaha, Nebraska, do not forget to watch that's right, it's going to be Splash on Deck presented by Xfinity. We're gonna have all the people talk about all the good stuff that is going on and we're gonna get you ready to cheer as loud as you can for these Americans who are heading to Tokyo for the 2020 Olympics. And until then, I have to say, this has been an exciting night. I hope you guys can feel it. We're gonna be back tomorrow right here on the last session brought to you by Golden Road Brewery. I am Amy Van Dyken, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Take care.